Over the past 10 years, uh, we have seen the remarkable growth of the bond market in this region. Uh, it has increased by sixfold, uh, or an average of 20% uh, uh, per annum. Uh, Thailand also has uh, experienced similar rapid growth, uh, but much of the increase has been due to the issuance of government bonds and central bank bonds rather than, than corporate bonds in terms of uh, ratio of GDP. As you can see, the ratio of government bonds is about 60% of GDP, while the uh, corporate bonds is just above 10%. I think uh, a lot of countries in this region share similar pattern uh, of development. Uh, uh, the market development uh, since the dark days of the Asian financial crisis, I think we have come a long way. But uh, there are challenges and, and more work needs to be done. Uh, as a proportion of, of, of national income and as a proportion of the intermediation uh, of the entire financial system, uh, there is much room uh, for the bond market to grow. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the high growth uh, of, of, of the market uh, has been due to the issuance of government bonds uh, as a result of uh, expansionary fiscal policy after the global financial crisis, and also the central bank securities issuance as a result of sterilized uh, intervention in the face of, of, of huge capital inflows. Uh, um, uh, corporate bond market, even though it has increased uh, markedly in recent years in a number of countries, Thailand, the Philippines, Malaysia. Uh, I think it is very, still very small, and it has not yet reached the stage where it can perform the proverbial spare tire for, for the banking system. Uh, uh, you know, when during the financial crisis in Asia uh, more than 10 years ago, there, it was said that uh, had we had a developed bond market, yeah, the economy wouldn't have been in such a bad shape in the face of the collapse of the banking system. The bond market would have been able to take the place of, 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 of the banking system. Uh, in the case of Thailand, uh, despite its growth, the corporate bond market is still about 12% of the total credit extended by the whole financial system, all the financial institutions taken together, the banks, the specialized financial institutions, so on. Uh, in terms of uh, secondary market liquidity, I think that there, there's much to be done. Uh, there's very limited turnover, and, and it's largely due to a lack of diversity in both on both the issuers and the investors' side. Uh, on the issue of, of, of regional or, or cross-border uh, integration and transactions, I think uh, uh, there there are certain limitations which prevent a deeper and closer integration uh, 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 within the region and, and with the rest of the world. And, and mostly it, this has been due to the fact that a number of countries still have restrictions on the capital account transactions uh, of one form or another. It ranges from the mildest form, uh, 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 mildest measure to you know the more heavy-handed uh, measure, ranging from registration, investment quota, uh, restriction on currency conversion, uh, requirement on minimum holding periods. And in some countries, uh, offshore financial institutions are still prohibited uh, uh, from making markets or trading in uh, FX-related instruments, which while if they don't have the true underlying trade or investment transactions. So in many countries, including Thailand, we do not have an active uh, market in, say, for instance, cross-currency interest rate swaps. Uh, uh, so, so without uh, relaxation of these restrictions on offshore bank participation in certain uh, deriv derivatives market, I think uh, uh, the, the room for, for further uh, uh, deepening of the market may be limited. Uh, I'll touch on a little on the key drivers of the market and the challenges uh, as I see it. Number one, I think in the first section, uh, uh, the, the, the panelists may have uh, uh, covered already, uh, is the fact that uh, many of the advanced economies still pursue 
exceptionally loose monetary policies uh, in the midst, uh, amidst uh, weak, very weak growth. And this will continue to push capital flows to the region, seeking yield and diversification. And number two, uh, which is a major uh, uh, development and, and which require a, a critical function to be performed by the bond market, is the massive infrastructure investments across Asia. I think the ADB has estimated that uh, from the year 2010 to 2020, uh, there will be there will need to be uh, investment in infrastructure to the tune of eight trillion US dollars. And in the case of Thailand, as we speak now, Parliament is debating uh, the two trillion baht uh, investment uh, in, in infrastructure, which is about uh, 70 billion US dollars, uh, which is to be spread over seven years. So this obviously, uh, this kind of investment cannot uh, rely on uh, bank funding, which basically is short term and, and, and will require a much deeper, much broader bond market. Uh, domestically, in many Asian countries, uh, we, we have seen the rise of the middle income earners and with it, the increase in, in wealth management products demand and increase in retirement saving schemes and pension schemes. All these will uh, necessitate uh, uh, the new products and, and further development of, of the bond market to serve their needs. From the macroeconomic point of view, given the fact that uh, growth in advanced economies uh, have been tepid uh, 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 at best, uh, and growth in Asia uh, increasingly has to hinge on intra-regional trade, intra-regional investment that Dr. Uwe has pointed out. Uh, bond market will perform a, a very crucial function in this regard in helping countries uh, uh, achieve a more balanced economy with less reliance on exports, with less reliance on bo overseas borrowing, but more dependence on domestic driven demand and do domestic savings. Uh, and, and this applies to not only at the national level, but at the regional uh, uh, level, as Dr. Uwe has pointed out. Why not have a regional uh, Asian savings for Asian in investment? Um, uh, the, the economic integration, uh, uh, which is increasingly more, more, more closer uh, in this region through uh, uh, intra-regional trade and investment and also uh, through the AEC in the year 2015 will spur even uh, greater financial integration in the region, including the bond market. Uh, uh, but obviously, uh, there are key challenges for policy maker as well. Uh, the, the key challenge is how best to harness benefits from liberalization and globalization of domestic bond market while uh, managing the risks uh, uh, that come with uh, globalization and exposure to the, the global market, capital flows and so on, and preserving macro financial stability. Which leads me to my uh, uh, second uh, uh, topic, uh, which is what role for the central banks to play uh, in fostering bond market development? Uh, obviously, uh, this is our primary mandate to maintain stable macro financial uh, environment. Uh, uh, in countries where the economy is and the financial subject is subject to period, periodic booms and busts, uh, you cannot have a well-developed financial market. Yield curves will be, you know, fluctuating all over, and 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 that will be not that will not be the the the, the market where. It is conducive for, for foreign investments and, and for, for development. Uh, from our point of view, deeper and more resilient markets uh, can help absorb macro shocks, whether they're from the real sector or they're from the financial flows. And enabling uh, smoother financial development, this is a kind of virtuous cycle. Um, stable economy, stable market will lead to more smoother financial development and so on. Uh, in terms of financial uh, integration, uh, it, 
doesn't mean that countries in the region they have economic uh, similarities or financial similarities. I think uh, uh, investors will continue to differentiate uh, among countries. Uh, and the countries which have better macro financial stability, which have more prudent macro and financial regulation, countries which have better institutions, better public finance, uh, are likely to be more successful in, in the financial market development. My last point, uh, which, which will be very quick, is on the, the, the challenge of managing uh, volatile capital flow, uh, particularly into the bond market. Uh, as we have seen from the chart uh, in front of you, uh, we have seen a lot of fluctuation uh, in uh, capital flows to Thailand over the, over the past several years, and uh, pressure is likely to, to persist going forward, given the growth differentials uh, with advanced economies. Uh, from our point of view, the, the situation right now, uh, uh, the capital inflows may not be the proximate causes of recent uh, increase in asset price valuation, be they in stock market or house prices, or even credit growth. First of all, uh, there are restrictions in investment in, in the real estate market by foreigners, and you know, equity price uh, action and turnover actually has been most pronounced uh, in the small cap stocks, which are traded mostly by local retail investors rather than the big cap stocks are traded by, by foreign in investors. And, and last but not least, capital flows into Thailand cannot directly expand money supply because exchange rate, uh, we are under flexible exchange rate. So we have retained certain degree of independence in our monetary policy and interest rate uh, uh, decision. Uh, a more relevant macro issue and policy concern, I think, is not with the capital flows per se, but with the exchange rate uh, appreciation, uh, which can move uh, uh, in tandem with fundamentals and with market sentiments and. and even in the, the absence of large capital flows. Although our assessment to date has been that uh, we haven't uh, reached a point where there's uh, serious misalignment that warrant any uh, action on our part. Uh, in summary, I would like to just, just uh, spend the next uh, minute uh, saying that much progress has been made in the development of the bond market, but uh, there are a lot of challenges that remain. And bond and capital market development uh, has to go hand in hand with macro financial stability, uh, thus raising the policy question about the appropriate pace of market liberalization and globalization. Uh, prudent macro policies and sound regulation of financial system are prerequisites to ensuring that these dual goals can be achieved. Uh, with robust, uh, resilient financial system and economy shocks from capital flows, for instance, uh, will be better absorbed without resorting to draconian measures. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, having said that, in instances where financial markets themselves are the source of shocks, uh, which might spill over to have real to damage on the real economy, then I think policymakers uh, should be ready to respond with commensurate measures, but uh, have to take due care uh, not throw away the baby with the bathwater. <laughs>